something else too. And there we go. Hey, Facebook. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Okay, today's work today's word is intense, so I want to get started and jump right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, thanking you for this day, thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your understanding. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Speak through me, breathe through me, live in me, O oh God. Let everything be said and done the way you want it said or done to the honor and glory of your name. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Today's prophetic word is answers. Again, today's prophetic word is answers. What do I mean by answers? Well, we're already dealing with, you know, the beer bug. I don't know if I can say, call it what it is, uh, because some social media platforms are banning us actually talking about what's going on, so I'll call it the beer bug, so everybody around the world is aware of what, what's going on. Everybody around the world is aware of the way the beer bug has been impact, <coughs> impacting their country, their counties, their cities, their states. There's no industry that hasn't been impacted by the beer bug, and I mean no industry, and I mean there's no industry. There's no uh, production of goods and services that humans do that has not been impacted by the beer bug going around the world. So everyone is aware of what? But the question then becomes, why? Why? Why is this happening? Okay? Why is this happening? Hey there, word of our testimony on Periscope. Thanks so much. When you come on the broadcast, please like and share, because whenever God has a prophetic word, we want that to go around the world so as many people as possible can hear it. So the question then becomes, why? Why is the beer bug here? Why is it impacting us? Why is it spreading around the world? Why is it doing all that it's doing? Okay, <clears throat> so what we need is some answers. We need some answers as to why all that's happening. Now, I can't speak for other countries because this thing is worldwide but what I'm talking about is particular to some things that have happened in America okay so let me say that again I can't speak for other countries this thing is worldwide so I'm not talking about all around the world I'm talking about things particular to America as to why this judgment has fallen on us you know there's been some other things happening as well I don't have time to go all the way back to 2001 to September 11th and us going to the Middle East 2003 there's been a whole lot of things happening. This what's happening now is uh, famine and pestilence. And we knew this was coming. You know, we prophesied about it last year because the Spirit of God showed us last year that famine and pestilence, famine and pestilence was next. Okay? And didn't know when it was going to hit, but knew it was going to hit soon. And then, you know, the beer bug hit. And it hit around the world. Okay? But we knew that famine and pestilence was coming up next because of the order of judgment and because of the horseman judgments that God releases in the book of Revelation. So, you know, we've seen war and we've seen death. That means what's coming after that is either conquest, which is the white horse with the bow, or famine and pestilence. So famine and pestilence is what's here now. And again, the question is why? Okay? And the answers are as follows. It's because God is trying to call our attention to our sins. God is trying to call our attention to the things that we have done wrong. God is trying to call our attention to the ways that we have sinned against him in order to bring us to repentance. Now, when you see the word repentance and repent in the Bible, that English word repent and repentance, what it means uh, in the original language is to change your mind. Repentance does not mean to stop doing something. It means to change the way you think. So when God is calling us to repentance, it means he's calling us to change the way we think. Specifically, and the word in the Greek specifically means to turn from your own way and to turn your thoughts to godliness. So in other words, God wants us to change our minds and turn our thoughts back to 
his way, back to his word, back to his commandments. And that's why the beer bug is here. That's why it's hit so hard to call attention to our sins. So I'm going to go through what those are. And remember, I'm just talking about America. I can't speak for all the other countries because this thing is worldwide. But I'm talking about specifically the country I, I live in. I'm talking about American stuff. <clears throat> Number one, there are four pools of blood that are crying out to God for justice. If you know anything about God and blood, you understand that when innocent blood is shed, it cries out to God from the ground. That's what happened when Cain killed Abel. That's what happened when Jesus dies. That's what happens when anyone that should have been killed, that didn't deserve the penalty of death, dies and their blood is shed. In our country, there's four pools of blood, blood going all the way back to our foundations. One pool of blood is the blood of Native Americans. Second pool of blood is the blood of African Americans, black people. Third pool of blood is the blood of immigrant, immigrant workers that have been shed, uh, innocent blood that's been shed. And the fourth pool of blood is the blood of abortion, where we have killed the children in the, <clears throat> in the womb. Because whenever a child is forming in the womb, God is trying to send someone into earth to, uh, for their generation so God can have a witness in their generation and whatever was inside that person, whatever gifts God put in that person, whatever that person was supposed to contribute to the world, God pours that in them when the baby is forming in the womb. And when we kill children before they even get a chance to come out here, then we're thwarting the very purpose of God. Whoever it was that God was sending into the world, we're thwarting the very divine and eternal purpose of God. What would have happened if Moses' mother had had an abortion? Because they do have abortions in the Bible, by the way. They, they, they do have abortion in the Bible. Ways that you can stop a pregnancy is actually in the scripture. So what would have happened if Moses' mother had had an abortion? What would have ha happened if Hannah, Samuel's mother, had aborted Samuel, because Samuel was the last great prophet that led Israel before the monarchy kicked in. Okay, what would have happened if King David's mother had had an abortion? What would have happened if Ruth had never been born? What would have happened if Esther had never been born? Okay, because Esther was the right person at the right time, uh, in, in the right place, to influence the king to save the Jews. What if there was no Esther because she was aborted? What if there was no Jeremiah or, or Isaiah and the big one, of course, is what if Mary had had an abortion, Jesus' mom? What if she had decided, after she accepted her assignment, that she didn't want to finish the pregnancy, that she, would have, she was going to terminate the Savior? So when we do that, there is someone in particular that God is trying to send into the world to bless the world according to his divine purpose in their time, in their season, in their generation. Because that's why you're born the year that you're born. Because you're supposed to grow up at a certain time in a certain generation to do a certain thing in your generation. So my father's assignment is not my assignment. My assignment is for my generation. People my age, people that were born in my, in, you know, plus or minus 20 years. My son, that's not my generation, that's his generation. And he has callings and things he's supposed to do there. So there are four pools of blood that are crying out to God for justice. Native Americans, African Americans, immigrant workers, and the blood of abortion. Okay? That's just number one. Number two, there is racism and denominationalism in the body of Christ. We as believers, see, God called for the end of religion, all religion and denominationalism at the end of 2014. If you don't understand what I mean by that, you have to watch my video uh, of the prophetic located word at the end of 2014. The Lord shifted and all the denominationalism and all the division that had been in the body, all the things that we use to divide up um, because when we stand on denominationalism, we tell people that they're, they're not real Christians or they can't worship with us because they don't do it like we do it. And they don't say what we say and it doesn't look like we think it should look. So they're not real Christians and or they can't fellowship with us. Well, the Lord called for uh, an end to that at the end of 2014 so that we would put aside our past racial differences because we, 
the Bible says that judgment first begins at the house of God, that does not just mean that God judges Christians first. It does mean that, but it also means that if change is going to happen in the world, it has to start with the saints. So we're supposed to be the model to unbelievers that we can all get along under the banner of Christ. That if we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we surrender our wills to him and we let his love fill our hearts, we can overcome racism through the grace of God, through the love of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. But when we are dividing up along racial lines as Christians, how does that make us any different from those that don't know Christ? How does that separate us? How does that make us any different from unbelievers? Okay, the Lord shifted at the end of 2014 and said, no more racial divisions. And that is why churches that got rid of denominationalism and churches that got rid of racial divides are thriving now. If you notice, the ministries that th are thriving now tend to be more multicultural and what we call diverse or whatever. But it's every kindred tongue, people, and nation. And there's a reason for that. The reason for that is because what God has been calling for is for every member of the body of Christ to snap into place. And what I mean by that is, if you're the nose, God wants you to be the nose. If you're the mouth, God wants you to be the mouth. If you're the shoulder, God wants you to be the shoulder. If you're the knee, God wants you to be the knee. If you're the eyes, God wants you to be the eyes. If you're the kidneys, if you're the liver, if you're the skeleton of the body of Christ, if you're the feet, okay, whatever you are on Jesus' body, us being divided is no longer viable. We cannot move forward as Christians and as a nation if we are still dividing up according to racial lines and according to denominational lines and people aren't living the purpose for which God created them. There's an old school belief, and this is primarily with African Americans because the African American, African American church has been the only institution historically where black people could gather, where we could worship, where we could fellowship, where we could be social. So, so for many, many years, uh, uh, black life centered around the black church, but there was a belief, old school belief, that the only way to serve the Lord was you know, either being in the choir or being on the usher board or you had to be a preacher. But the truth of the matter is, is that God calls Christians into all walks of life. God calls Christians into law enforcement. In the Bible, God called Joseph into politics and governmental administration because he was vice president, vice chancellor of Egypt. He was also uh, the head of the Department of Agriculture because Joseph was the one that managed all the grain that saved the world. God called Nehemiah to rebuild the wall. Okay? That's not him being a preacher in church or preaching a sermon. That's a rebuilding activity. That's a restoration to the church. Some prophets were called to cry out against the sins of the church as Jerusalem fell and as Israel was taken into captivity. That would be Isaiah and Jeremiah. Uh, the apostle Paul was a, uh, an apostle, but he was also a tent maker. He made tents, okay? He was a Pharisee, and then he got born again, and he became a tent maker by profession. But the point I'm trying to make is that God is calling his children into uh, being uh, school teachers and school superintendents and lawyers and law enforcement officers and chefs and and uh, cooks and uh, every walk of life, uh, why every walk of life, architects, engineers. God is calling His entire body, not little segments that are broken up by racism and denomination denominationalism, but God is calling His entire body to snap into place. Whatever it is, there need to be Christians in media and entertainment. Every industry and every walk of life, God is calling his children to hear his voice about their calling and get into place. Wherever it is God is telling you to do, whatever it is God is telling you, you to do, if God calls you into full-time ministry in the house of God, great. But if you're not called to full-time ministry, then whatever else you're called to in your life, that's just as much a call from God as a call into full-time ministry to work in the church of God, in the house of God. So a lot of people have sometimes been confused because they didn't understand that God is calling you to wherever he's calling you, and he wants you to snap into place. And so we can't be divided up on racial lines. 
because different cultures and ethnic groups and different people have different revelations from God that's all supposed to feed the body. You don't have to be like anybody else. On the contrary, you're not supposed to be like anybody else. You're supposed to do what you do. But you're supposed to feed the body with what you do the same way your lungs and your stomach and your heart and your kidneys and your liver and your pancreas and your spleen and your appendix. The same way that they do what they do inside your body. You're supposed to do what you do. But you've got to be in place for that to happen. And as long as we stay divided along racial lines or denominational lines, we refuse to worship with certain people, we think everybody has to do it like we do it, then we are never going to come into the fullness that God has called us to. And that's what we should have been doing for the past six years. Again, so that we can be an example to unbelievers, that we can all get along under the banner of Jesus Christ through obedience to him. Okay? But how is God going to hold that light up to people that don't know him if the people that do know him are just as racist and just as divided and just as out of place as unbelievers? If you're doing the wrong thing for a living, if you're married to the wrong person, if you're living in the wrong city, you are out of the will of God. You are bones out of joint. Jesus is trying to move his body and you're causing him pain because you're not in the place that God has called you to be, wherever that place is. Okay, I have to move on. Uh, the next one, so I talked about the four pools of blood. I talked about racism and denominationalism in the body. The third one is God said five and we said three. What did you say? I said, God said five, and we said three. What do I mean by that? God said in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12 that he gave unto some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That's fivefold ministry. That's, that's the name we use for it, fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And that's not the only place in the Bible that lists the gifts. But God gave us five gifts. For so long in this country, we have told God, we just want three. We just honor evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but we don't honor the apostolic and the prophetic. The apostolic and the prophetic is just as much a part of the grace of God as evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay, And there is no one office that can do all the jobs. Why do you think so many pastors end up with heart attacks and strokes and exhaustion and crises of faith and dying early. You know why they do that? Because can't no one job, can't no one office, it's like your four fingers and your thumb. There's not one of the members of your hand that can do the job of the whole hand. <clears throat> so God reached out and said, I'm giving you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to edify you, to equip you, to build you up, to help you come into maturity. And what did we say? We said, we'll just take evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And then pastors sometimes try to do all that by themselves and end up getting burnt out and end up dying before their time. And do you know why? Because even though sometimes there is, there is, you know, more than one anointing in a person, like someone could be an apostle, but they're heavily laced with the prophetic, or they're a prophet as well, like my pastor is both an apostle and a prophet. Some people can be prophetic pastors. Some people can be prophetic teachers. That's, you know, part of what I am. But there's still a core anointing for each gift. And don't know one person have all the gifts. And can't know one person do all the jobs. And don't know one person or denomination have all the revelation. That's why we're not supposed to be divided. But if you are a believer, you are supposed to regularly be uh, be uh, getting under the ministry. Now, I don't mean you have to join the church. I mean, you have to expose yourself to the teaching of an apostle, a pro the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelical, the pastoral, and the teaching. The local church that you go to, that's your pastor, that's your shepherd, that's the one that watches out for your, your soul, and that's where you pay your tithes. But now we have social media, and the Word of God can go all over the world. You need to be listening to the teachings of an apostle. If you don't go to the uh, church where an apostle runs it, you at least need to be getting their teaching. You need to be listening to the teachings and the prophetic utterances of a prophet. You need to be listening to the teaching and the lifestyle of an evangelist to learn how to be a soul winner. You need to be under the care of a shepherd. See, so some churches have all these gifts in the house, and so some congregations get the full benefit. 
some churches maybe have like one or two that they honor. So you like, you know, maybe you send missionaries in the field and maybe you have a pastor. But, you know, uh, so, you know, you don't get the full exposure because some churches are stronger on preaching and some churches are stronger on teaching. Some churches are stronger on winning souls, evangelism, and then some churches are stronger on building up souls, discipleship. I stopped by to tell you, we're supposed to do all of that. It's not either or, it's not this is better than that. We're supposed to do all of that. And when you sit under the apostolic, the word apostle means messenger. It means sent one. It means sent one. So many times an apostle is sent to establish a church to lay foundation, like doctrinal foundation. That's what the Pauline epistles or the letters that Paul wrote to the churches were about. Paul was teaching the Romans, the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Colossians. Then he wrote two letters to Timothy, his pastor, protege. He was teaching Christians, this is how you behave as a Christian. As an apostle, he was laying foundation because that's part of what apostles do. As prophets, we bring judgment, we bring correction, we bring governmental realms, we bring order. Uh, sometimes we bring prognostication. God will show us stuff in the future that hasn't happened yet. Okay? And see, anointings are different from person to person. Some things are stronger than others, and then some people have different kinds of experience. As believers, we're supposed to be exposed to all five apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. You need all five to be everything that God has called you to be. God gave us five, but we said we'll just take three. And now you have pastors being burned out. You have some churches that only honor even one out of those three. The apostolic and the prophetic needs to first be recognized in the body of Christ and restored and honored just like the evangelical pastoral and teacher. Uh, second of all, under fivefold ministry, uh, we have, uh, there's been evangelists and pastors that have had access to the higher echelons of government, but where are the prophets that can speak to the White House? Because in the scriptures, King David had Nathan, and Nathan was the prophetic voice to King David when he reigned and ruled over Israel. So where is the prophetic voice, where is the apostolic voice that has access to the White House, to the higher uh, upper echelon levels of government? That's just as important, that's just as much God, that's just as real as evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay? And finally... Uh, the restoration of the family. The Lord told me that his divine order solves all our problems. When we as believers put our families together the way the Lord and the scripture says to put our families together, it solves the problems. Christ is the spiritual head from heaven over every member of the family because he gives commandments to every member of the family. Men are in the headship position Women are in the submissive position. Children are in the obedience position. That's what the Bible teaches about the order of the family. Okay? None of God's commandments are an excuse for abuse. People have many times hated the word of God and rejected the word of God and thrown out the word of God because there's been so much abuse in God's name. That is not God. That's people. God's commandments are love commandments. God's order is what's best for us. God's commandments are holy commandments, meaning that they're pure. So when we get back in divine order, it's not to punish us. It's to bless us. It's because the only way the family can function the way it's supposed to function, and the only way every member of the family can be what it's supposed to be is if we're in order, which means Christ is the spiritual head over everybody. Men are in the headship position, women are in the submissive position, and children are the, in the obedience position because we love the Lord, not because somebody is abusing you or taking advantage of you or, or trying to make you do something, because that's what the Lord says. That will solve all of our problems if we get in divine order. And in fact, the last thing that God says in the Old Testament is that he's going to send Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest he come and smite the earth with a curse. I will give you the exact address of that scripture. That is in Malachi 
3. That's the last thing that God says before Jesus comes in the New Testament. That is Malachi 3. No, that's NIV. I want King James. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, no, I'm sorry, Malachi 4, Malachi 4, I'm sorry, Malachi 4. Okay, Malachi 4, 5, and 6, Malachi 4, I'm sorry, Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. What just dropped? What just dropped on the earth? The beer bug. The entire earth had a pestilence curse dropped on it. The entire earth. What did God just say? What's that scripture I just read to you? Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. God did not talk about the church. God did not talk about governments. God did not talk about educational institutions. What did God say? God said, the heart of the fathers got to turn back toward their kids. And God said, the heart of the kids got to turn back toward their fathers. Or else the earth will be smitten with a curse. That's why I tell you all the time when I read the scripture, I'm not making this up. You know how sometimes people just say prophets are crazy and you're just out there on the deep end and blah, 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 blah. That's why I read you the Bible. You now have a real life example of what the Lord just said. If you believe that the beer bug is not affecting the planet, you haven't been paying attention. Okay? Because the Lord said the fathers got to turn their hearts, their attention, their focus back to raising their children. And the Lord said the children got to respect dad we have to get back in divine order underneath christ or else god said he would drop a curse on the entire earth and what just happened oh prophet taylor you just crazy okay oh prophet taylor that don't count that's the old testament okay oh you just making something up okay then have at it if we don't want to repent and do what the lord says do we are free to keep going our own way. That means if we don't repent and obey the word of God, worse things are coming. Oh, Prophet Taylor, you just crazy. Okay. Ha have it your way. Because if we don't do what the Lord has told us to do, worse things than the beer bug are coming. Worse things than the beer bug are coming. Worse things than the beer bug are coming if we don't change our minds and deal with these four areas of sin I've talked to you about today. So let me go over them again uh, before we close out. There's four pools of blood that must be dealt with. The blood of Native Americans, the blood of African Americans, the blood of immigrant workers, and the blood of abortion. All that blood is crying. I'm just talking about America with that. All that blood is crying out to God from the ground for justice. <coughs> Excuse me. Racism and denominationalism in the body of Christ, where we have divided up along racial lines and told God we're not going to worship with those people. And we have divided up along denominational lines and told God that if people don't do it our way, they ain't really saved and they ain't Christians and we ain't going to fellowship with them. God called for an end of all that at the end of 2014 because he wants every single member of his body, regardless of age or gender or skin color or geographical location, to snap into the place that Christ has called you to be so that you can begin to supply what the body of Christ needs, whatever that is, because that's up to Jesus and the Holy Ghost. It's up to you to obey and get in place. Don't try to be the ears if you the mouth. Don't try to be the wrist if you the nose. It's up to you to HBO. Don't I tell you that every week? Hear, believe, and obey whatever God is telling you to do. And God is calling his children to all walks of life, not just those that have a a priesthood call to actually serve in the house of God. Media, entertainment, law enforcement, uh, lawyers, engineers, cooks, architects. God is calling his children to every walk of life. Okay? Number three, God said five, 
and we said three. God said apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the body, to build us up, to become all that we're supposed to be in Christ. But we've told God for decades now, we'll just take evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The apostolic and the prophetic must be restored and must be honored. And then we need to be able to, to uh, move in the apostolic and the prophetic in the highest levels of the land so that the word of the Lord, that is not about ego, that is not about wanting to be seen, and so that the word of the Lord can impact the decision makers and the lawmakers, the ones that affect our lives, so that godliness can rule the land. And finally, the restoration of the family. Christ is the spiritual head in heaven, and Christ gives commandments to every member of the family. On earth, men are in the headship position, women are in the submissive, submissive position as the wife, and children are in the obedience position. That's what the scripture teaches, and that is not punishment. That is God's divine order. That is to be done in love because it, it brings the highest yield out of the family because God's commandments are love commandments. But I just read you in Malachi 4 that if we tell God that we're not going to honor his divine order, that we're just going to do whatever we want to do, then God said, if you don't get the men back concerned about raising their children, and if you don't get the children back concerned about honoring their dads, God said, I'm going to smite the whole earth with a curse. And I will repeat what has dropped in the last seven days. That would be the beer bug and the whole planet has been impacted. So you can think I'm crazy if you want to. You can think I'm out there. You can think whatever you want to think of me. The point is for the Lord to get our attention for our sins and for us to repent, to change our minds, and to get back in divine order with what he's calling for. And if we don't, and if we don't want to, then worse things are coming. The end. Okay, uh, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. I'm going to pray in tongues and ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else. I uh, need to say financially, prophetically, healing and deliverance. Okay? So if you've got any prayer requests for me, put them on the screen right now. Okay? Okay, I think that was it. So, uh, again, watch this video from the beginning to get all the details. Um, uh, I just did my No More Genies on Thursday, and we went over the parable of the hired workers. It was really powerful. My prophetic devotional is available now for the first quarter, and my second quarter pro prophetic devotional is going to drop on April 1st. Um, and I will be here same time next week, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, my heart is overflowing with this message today. Because I don't want worse things to come. I don't want to go through this anymore. I don't want there to be more pestilence. I don't want there to be worse things. But, but until we put our attention back on God, until we learn how to love the Lord, fear the Lord, serve the Lord, the way he's telling us to, not making up our own programs, but being obedient to what thus saith the Lord, then you saw what the scripture said. So my heart is full of this message. My heart is heavy with this message, but I have hope that if, if, if the prophetic message is released, that, that we can hear the voice of God and repent, change our minds, turn from things that are not pleasing in his sight and turn to his divine order, uh, everything he wants to do in the body and <clears throat> restoring the apostolic and the prophetic. Okay? Amen and God bless you. As always, I'll put the links to everything in the first comment or somewhere in the comments if there are other comments. Somewhere in the comment section below because it got to be a lot for me to put in the title. Okay? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you to those of you that are listening to me on the podcast. Thank you to those of you that are watching the replays. And I will see you live same time next week, uh, next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next live prophetic word. Okay? And remember, it's time for us to repent. Turn from our ways and turn back to God. Amen and amen.